To what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. An ecosystem crumbling because of mass production of wasteful products, poor ability to recycle, the burning of fossil fuels, and single-use plastic. A world that in 2016 had a surge of tyrants take over and, and install fascist regimes. Technology that invades privacy and profits by selling your information without your knowledge or direct consent. Racism and xenophobia. Homophobia justified by people who practice religions with holy books they take literally that have mythologies they believe to have historical evidence of which there is none. Women's reproductive rights stripped in the USA. Activists for women's rights and liberty killed in the Middle East. A pandemic that could have possibly been avoided or at least fought more effectively had the president been competent and not destroyed the NSC pandemic unit. Need I go on? Any of these sound like an apocalyptic science fiction novel. And I wish that were the case, but no, this is where we are at in the world today. Alistair Crowley wrote Duty and published it in 1921. Quote, a note on the chief rules of practical conduct to be observed by those who practice and accept the law of the Lima. End quote. Within the text, he outlines the responsibilities of Dolomites, and I argue its contents are needed now more than ever. If our great work as Thelemites requires us to do our will, how can we do that if we make our planet uninhabitable or allow tyrants to deny us the ability to move freely? The problems outlined in the text, now a hundred years later, have proven to be very real, and the solutions outlined are basically neglected at large. We need to step up to the plate. All of us need to step up to the plate. If you have a voice, speak up. If you have energy, take action. If you have the ability to work with hands, it's time to roll up your sleeves. You are needed. Will you be part of the problem, complacent, or will you take initiative and work towards bettering yourselves, your hometown, your nation, the planet? If we each did even just a little, that adds up to a lot. If there is one thing I respect about the Freemasons, it is that they have long used their lodges to raise money to help people and build up their communities. So I ask each and every one who hears this, what have you done? Who have you helped? Have you vocalized to those unaware? Cleaned up or done any kind of service in your community? If not, then what are you waiting for? I'll be going through Crowley's text momentarily and adding to it based on things they didn't have back in the early 1900s. As bad as social media can sometimes be for its toxic nature of encouraging fighting, it is a tool. A knife is a tool and it can be used to carve creations of beauty, cut food, or it can be used to hurt someone. It only depends on whose hand it is in. So, how do you use the internet? Do you use it to learn, to connect with others and network for the betterment of mankind? or to simply accost others with your opinions, walking away angry by arguments that no one is better for having participated. I have no problem admitting that I've used it for all of these, but at least I know and I try to do better. That is all any of us can do. Someone in the Middle East recently wrote to me on Facebook Messenger letting me know that my YouTube channel helps them a lot. They are in an Islamic state and would face persecution where it discovered that they practice the occult, but they know that the superstitions surrounding the occult come from ignorance, and the performance of the great work is actually a beautiful process that has helped them tremendously, and through that has allowed them to help others. So they text me thanking them, as it's currently impossible for them to connect with the community in person, so listening to my channel has helped them a lot. I felt grateful, not just for them saying that my work on the channel helps them, that felt good. I enjoy the praise, but no, I'm grateful for the freedom that I hardly even realize I have to be able to practice the Lima with impunity. I have no fear of doing my will in NYC, but they face impris imprisonment or worse. So that made me pause and think. For those of us who live in free states, countries that allow us to speak what we will, we should, each of us, as Delamites, have a responsibility to those who do not, to share the law and speak about how it is that we embrace it, live it, and how it has affected us. What struggles, even in our free states, did we have to face? What societal pressures did we have to overcome to be ourselves, to live Libra Oz, and to grant Libra Oz to even those who reject it? 
And can we then look at the broader picture and see gratitude that what struggles we face may be minuscule to some who face not only criticism from their peers, but actual judgment, actual death penalty simply for existing as they truly are? And can we not find empathy deep in our souls that can propel us to live a life of love in the light with more joy for the liberty that the law grants us? Duty by Alistair Crowley consists of four sections, A to D, and of those has 16 subject, subsections total. Duty to ourselves, duty to other individuals, duty to mankind as a whole, duty to other beings and things. So, duty to yourself, to know thyself, quote, to explore the natures and powers of your own being, end quote. I thought it worthwhile to give you a quick checklist. Study of the Book of the Law and its comment is paramount. Moreover, to find identification within its pages is crucial. But also I find applying Libre Libre just as important. Study of spirituality, science, math, philosophy, history, and any other areas that particularly call to you. Keeping a journal and looking back within its pages from time to time. Self-respect, hygiene, are all of your basic needs met? And if so, what can you do to increase your joy and love in your life? I believe that if we made the practice of keeping a diary part of the global educational curriculum from the time a child learns to write, the overall level of introspection would improve manifold. This would translate into many other areas of life and definitely help individuals discover what their purpose is with the short time that we as humans have per incarnation. The next part of this section requires a mixture of pride and humility, in my opinion. The line says, quote, find yourself to be the center of your own universe, end quote, and is followed by a quote from Libraille chapter 2, verse 6, I am the flame that burns in every heart of man and in the core of every star. So what does this mean? In short, everything external to the center of your being is Nui, the night sky goddess. She is the circumference. She is infinite space. The center of your being, a single point of consciousness, is Hadid. He is the ascending soul, the winged disk of the Egyptians. Together they make the glyph of the sun, a circle with a dot in its center. You are the center of the universe, but so is everywhere else. If space is infinite, then everywhere is also the center. These two things are in constant union despite the illusion of division. This union breeds Heru Raha. Again, studying Crowley's comment on, the, on L, as well as going through Libra's Nu and Had, will help clear up any misunderstandings and help you achieve union. Next, contemplate your nature and discover the true will. Somebody asked me today, quote, I'm really feeling lost. How can I discover my will? End quote. <clears throat> I think my answer to them may be sufficient to expand on this point. Quote, First off, do you keep a magical diary? If not, look at Libra E and begin doing so. <clears throat> Every day, whether you practice that day or not. If you're already keeping the diary, look at times when you're doing really good. You may find some inspiration there. Next, do the fundamental daily practices. The LBRP, LBRH, Libra Resh, Asana, Pranayama, Dharana, the Mass of the Phoenix. Do these every day for a few weeks. Take a day off here and there, but set a time limit, like three months or six months, of doing at least daily banishings and resh, and at least once a week or more doing the Mass of the Phoenix. Make sure you have them memorized. Try to use Asana as the holy meditation after each of the daily resh med recitations. Start looking for the meditation practices that force you to take a look at who you are, such as Liber Taurus Vel Domus Dei and Liber Yod. Then make some time to try new things, hobbies, traveling. Look at what areas of life you are happy with and which you are not. Look for the things you should be doing but are scared to try. If after all of this you don't know what direction to take or at least feel better, I would be really surprised. But you have to do the work. It's an everyday thing, not a once in a while thing. Ultimately, as far as I'm concerned, life has only the purpose we assign it and based on experience and self-knowledge. You probably need those two things. We all do. Then, it's up to you to take who you are and find things that bring you happiness. It's as easy as that, 
and as difficult as that. I find love and joy are the two greatest achievements in life. Try seeking these in your life through what you do. End quote. Of course, as far as the true will is concerned, this is incomplete, but it is a good start to help get on track at the beginning. Discovering your true will can be as easy or as hard as you make it, as we make it. In certain areas, we know ourselves perfectly, but in others, there may be blockades. You might try to find a system that works in a Golden Dawn t style manner, such as the AA system. They have good directions to get past these blockades and help us learn who we are. You might try doing the solitary work in yourself. You could start with the Equinox, go through Magic Book 4, see what books are recommended through those, research those, you know. However you need to go about the work is how you should be going about the work. It is then taking the self-knowledge you gain and using it in a way that allows you, us, to manifest who we are through action. Coming to a union with the HGA via Abermelon Magic or Libra Samic may be more beneficial than most things, but that takes time to get to, it takes preparation and prerequisites. Here, I'm going to move to the next section, though you should read for yourself the other few subpoints that I skipped. So this next part is duty to men, women, and I'm adding intermediary sexed individuals to the category. Libra Oz is our greatest tool in this endeavor. For those who cannot be as they are without fear of death, at the very least, know thyself. Be true to that person who looks back in the mirror and follow at least the Rosicrucian way of the chameleon. Act in the way of the culture you reside in as necessary so as to blend in that you may perform the great work undisturbed and in solitude. If you have the freedom to actually live as your most authentic self, you owe it not only to yourself but to everyone that interacts with you especially those whom your presence makes uncomfortable. Enough of that discomfort, and perhaps they will be inspired to look deeper into why they get so uncomfortable just because someone is being themselves absolutely. You never know how you will affect others. More than what you have and what you've achieved, I believe we would do better as a species to make the measure of a person how many, how many they have helped, what service have they done. In this regard, I find leading by example and inspiring others to take up service commitments is the best way to help anyone. We all have different skills, and by bringing these out and working together do we build up our communities together. If you are good at patiently working with others to help them bring out their own skills, do so. You'll be doing everyone a great service. There is a subsection here that says, quote, abstain from all interferences with others' wills, end quote. And this is followed by the next one, quote, Seek, if you so will, to enlighten another when need arises, end quote. The first part is obvious, live and let live. The only time I believe it is okay to take action against another person is if they are clearly a tyrant and harming others, or directly and or deliberately stopping people from being who they are, doing their will. Past that, minding one's own business is usually the best course of action. Not opening our mouths to criticize or give unsolicited advice is usually best. Helping others is good, but there are ways to do that and ways you could hurt yourself by accident trying to do so. Also, does someone actually want your help? Sometimes, and it is a case-by-case -case thing, this doesn't apply to all, but did the person ask for your help? If not, probably best to let it be, but you know, again, case-by-case. We can't help everyone who acts us. Sometimes what they need is out of our realm of experience, and in so trying, we may inadvertently harm the person more than anything else. So, first off, know if you can actually help that person. A rigid level of honesty with self is mandatory here. If you can help, and it doesn't hurt you to do so, yeah, do your best. Try to help that person along to bring out their ability to do their will. Sometimes it's really the small things that go much further than some grandiose business. You know, a smile can change a person's mood. Feelings and emotions are infectious. Spreading anger or happiness can affect a person a lot. Of course, be true to yourself and don't suppress emotions either. But make sure to keep yourself in check. Just try to keep a balance in this regard. Keep in mind that we are all of the same source. Seeing divinity in all people really goes a long way. Every person is a star with an orbit through life. They all experience happiness and tragedy. They will, they will all be ignorant of something 
and have much knowledge of other areas of life. Keeping this in mind, how can one hate someone for their gender, skin color, nationality, etc? It just doesn't make sense. Be tolerant. It's so easy. Quote, each being is, exactly as you are, the sole center of a universe, in no wise identical with, or even assimil ass assimilable to, your own. The universe of another is therefore necessarily unknown to, and unknowable by, you. But it induces currents of energy in yours by determining in part your reactions. Use men and women, therefore, with the absolute respect due to invial inviolable standards of measurement. Verify your own observations by comparison with similar judgments made by them. And, studying the methods which determine their failure or success, acquire for yourself the wit and skill required to cope with your own problems. End quote. Diversity is, a be is beautiful and has much room for growth. No one culture is perfect. Each has good things and detrimental parts, but sharing them I find enriches us. It is one thing about growing up in NYC that really makes me grateful. I got to experience tons of culture and it allowed me to learn so much about myself and others. It forced me from a young age to be tolerant and I'm all the better for this diversity. Duty to Mankind First off, establishing the law of the Lima as the sole basis of conduct. I think where people screw this up is by throwing the book of the law at people who already hate religion due to childhood indoctrination or for whatever reason. It begins with self. Again, by leading by example and then feeling out situations, you can get greater fruit than simply telling people about magic, Crowley, and the Lima. For example, you don't have to instruct somebody in Libras directly to tell them that they need to respect people's rights. Instead, when someone out of the blue criticizes someone because of the way they are comfortable dressing or speaking or for their sexuality, you can simply and gently remind them that that just isn't their business. Then, if appropriate, maybe ask them why they are offended by someone else doing something that has nothing to do with them. Gently talking and listening goes much further than preaching. Be receptive and understand that they are the product of their environment. The world is in crisis, and we each need each other now more than ever. Divisions over politics are not going to matter when natural disasters destroy various nations. And we could avoid that by fixing ourselves and helping those willing to work on themselves. At this point in time, it's obvious that not everyone is ready for such simple things as tolerance and change. But diligence and perseverance. A trickle of water will carve a canyon through a mountain given enough time. So stay at it, day in and day out. In the front of Israel Regardi's uh, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn book, the 1987 edition, there is a quote that I hold dear. Nothing in this world can take the place of, persi of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. We are responsible. Great changes have been made, but we are so far from the goal of equality. Even in countries that are more liberal than most, there is still so much hate. In the U.S., I blame our leaders. God, hypocritically enough, I can almost I could say I hate both parties to a great extent. Even the progressives have begun failing. One side preaches hateful rhetoric to stay in power, to rob the poor and enrich the wealthy. The other side feigns tolerance for all to stay in power, to rob the poor and enrich the wealthy. Our movements keep failing because the government placates them with the bare minimum, which quells the anger of the people and stops the swell of power the people actually have through various movements over the years. Take the civil rights movement. Their goal was to abol abolish racial segregation, discrimination, and disenfranchisement in the USA. But how are black Americans treated by and large at present day? Is there not a ton of racism still built into the system? What of the results of centuries of abuse? Have African Americans recovered after all of that abuse they've taken, or are they still dealing with the results of that abuse? They should have kept pushing as hard as Martin Luther King Jr.'s movement was at its peak until they got real equality. 
Take the LGBT movement. Where is it? Is there a community? I say no. The gays and lesbians got marriage and adoption rights. They left the trans women to fight for hormones and surgery, and then after they got that, has homophobia been quelled? Where's the education? LGBT people came together out of bare necessity, but I'd be lying if I didn't admit how much racism, sexism, transphobia, and people insulting bisexuals there is in the, in the so-called LGBT community, without even realizing that any of them are doing so. They should be the ultimate example of acceptance of all people, and yet this is where that movement is at. I used to attend quite a few different groups at the LGBT center in Chelsea. I've long since avoided that place like the plague. Before I transitioned, the lesbians talked to me as angrily as possible, and the boys all loved having me around. I heard about discrimination against Asians. Body types and going to the gym seemed to be more important than most things amongst the average man there. After I transitioned, suddenly the lesbians were very sweet, the ones who at least weren't transphobic. A lot of the gays that I was good friends with suddenly wouldn't answer my phone calls. By and large, bisexuals are deemed confused and will either steal your boyfriend or leave you for a woman. And again, this isn't a movement that should be fighting at the forefront to make acceptance of all people the highest priority. For over 1,500 years, LGBT people were persecuted. It's been less than 50, with some rights, and too many have already given up fighting. Do you think because the law on marriage was changed that it's safe? Already the Supreme Court was coming after us, and now in some states gay marriage is about to be illegal, though it has to be recognized if you were in a marri if you were married in a state that does accept the marriage. Already we are regressing. I intend to write about this topic more in depth on its own as it's very personal to me, and I have a lot more experience I'd like to share, but for now I must cut it shorter than I'd like. So far still as mankind is concerned, we all need food, shelter, and clothing. Here, I actually need to praise China for one thing they did right, and that was for crashing their housing market. In the U.S., large companies are buying up as much real estate as possible and jacking up the price of rent. It's practically impossible for the person of average income to afford to buy a home. We need laws that make it illegal for corporations to buy up real estate, thereby crashing the price of property, thus allowing more people to buy a home. We need laws also that protect renters. So... What is the solution to the above problems? First of all, get corporate money and dark donations out of politics. Next, term limits for all elected officials. Lobbying has to go immediately. Right now, our politicians in this country are legally allowed to be bribed. That compromises their integrity. I'm um, sure there are others, but Wolfpack, wolf-pack.com is fighting to get an amendment to the Constitution that would address the issues of money in politics, and I would advise those interested in looking into their movement. But this, le this lecture isn't just about this country. I don't know how all governments work or what repercussions are for protesting and fighting back in some places, but... We should be leading by example here in this country that propagandize the idea of being the most free land of liberty in the world. I've been told that since I'm a child, and where is this freedom and liberty? So we should be leading here. If we really are that land of liberty and freedom, we need to prove that we are just that, or else admit the reality of the situation, that we are not as free as we pride ourselves on being. Each and every American who calls themselves a Delamite should find interest in this cause. Or, at, at the very least, find a cause you do believe benefits you and others and fight for it politically. Use your voice. Take action. We need more organizations that can help with outreach for people in other nations that are being killed or enslaved. LGBT rights are non-existent in much of Africa and the Middle East. Too many are killed just for their nature. How many people do you hear speaking up? What about women's rights in the Middle East? How about anti-dictatorships? Who do you hear actually speaking up for these causes? Talking is the least you can do to keep people aware. We have the internet, we can network, we can organize. Who knows how to do this, has the experience, and who is willing to help take action to fight for a cause? There are so many issues, it would be impossible to give fair time to them all. So I have only picked a few so far, and I'll speak about one more I'd like to see addressed in the USA before moving on. 
and that one is the failed war on drugs and profiting on incarceration of criminals. Hopefully, all for-profit prisons will be closing soon, as I recall hearing that Biden signed legislation in that regard, but I'm anxious. I'll believe it when I see it. Now, I'm of the school that believes every drug should be legalized. At the very least, administered like methadone clinics, given freely under supervision until the person proves that they are responsible enough to take it home and use it safely. At best, educate people as part of grammar school's curriculum and allow substances to be sold in stores just like alcohol. There are many texts that Crowley has written about this concept. Um, you could look into those on your own, I suggest. Uh, if you're interested in that topic, do so. So, to continue on this topic, I love Vice TV. They had a commercial that opened up with a voiceover saying, quote, I'd like to congratulate drugs for winning the war on drugs, end quote. The USA has caused murder and crime all over South America, forcing the cartels to be as vicious as they are because of the war on drugs. One of the major reasons for invading the Middle East was for the opium poppies. If we legalized drugs in the USA and, and taxed sales, we would thrive, and the people producing them in South America or elsewhere would also. The biggest problem concerning drugs is twofold. The cut that is put into to stretch profits is often very toxic or deadly and causes tons of health risks. Risks, And number two, the behaviors caused by the taboo of drugs, the lying, sneaking, hiding, stealing. If they were legal and sold with taxes on them, these behaviors would pretty much disappear. No one would have to lie and steal. There would be no need to cut them with fentanyl. Overdose rates would drop drastically. Here, I have to move on to the final and possibly most depressing portion. Your duty to all other beings and things. Whether you acknowledge our ecosystem collapsing in real time or not because of climate change, you cannot deny the fact that animals, fish, and bug species are rapidly going endangered and extinct at an absurdly fast rate. There is a continent of plastic waste in our Pacific Ocean. Pipelines keep leaking. Fracking is destroying land masses right and left. We have the ability to produce green en energy, but we pro prioritize profit motive over survival. We have outdated technology running our nuclear arm systems in the US. Enough nukes worldwide to probably destroy our species. Nuclear power plants that are built on fault lines that can destroy large cities with but one earthquake. Bees are endangered, and if they go instinct, there goes natural production of most plant life. We are responsible, and we are dooming ourselves. So what do we do? We allow idiots to hoard wealth, which they mostly accumulated through government handouts, and then preach how bad socialism is. The people, with the most assets, should be the most responsible for our planet, but they pay off legislators through lobbying to make laws that allow them to circumvent environmental protection laws, and consequently are responsible for destroying our planet. Well, regardless, whether through complacency, through bribery, or by actually believing that our leaders are doing the right thing in their positions, we are all going to inevitably pay the consequences. Quote, the law never fails to avenge infraction, as when wanton deforestation has ruined a climate or a soil, or as when the importation of rabbits for a cheap supply of food has created a plague." End quote. We have a law of checks and balances. Unlike the lies we are told by the USA that the three branches of government are a system of checks and balances, the law of the Lima is. Sure, these three branches um, disagree on social issues based on party, but they all stuff their pockets from insider trader secrets for the stock market and by writing loopholes into tax laws for the ultra wealthy. No, all three branches are in cahoots. Well, if what I've written already isn't upsetting enough, here is the depressing part. Karma. It is coming. Every injustice, every infraction of the law of the Lima, across the planet, through the ages. The check is coming due. We are already seeing the effects, and I believe we can course correct now, but it is going to require substantial changes. The world provides enough for all people, but when parts of the ecosystem are being abused and resources ripped up and discarded at the current rate we are using them, it does not allow enough time for regeneration. What is worse, we have the solutions. 
already we have solar, wind, and hydroelectricity available, we would do well to replace oil and coal energy facilities quicker and make green energy our sole means of energy. Even if that means we do not have enough energy at first to keep every building lit up 24-7 all year round. Even if that means we have to give up a few hours of television. That time spent watching entertainment could be better used anyway. We need more hands on deck cleaning up. We have acted like a fraternity since the Second World War and it's time to clean up the frat house. We have recently created the first perpetual energy device. It is too small at present to produce more than enough energy to make a pot of coffee, but I am confident that we will be able to make it larger. In the meantime, we should be cutting back on energy consumption and regulating capitalism. Plastic should be practically illegal as we are clearly not responsible enough to use it safely. Overconsumption of cheap disposable products that are clogging our landfill should stop being produced. Gods, what a fucking mess. Well, as I said, the check is coming due. The planet will be fine, our souls are immortal, and if we destroy this planet perhaps we will go elsewhere, but until then all we are doing is causing ourselves unnecessary suffering. We need experts who are willing to take up one task per person and lead coalitions to fix these messes. We've allowed our species to create. One for plastic waste removal, one to oversee agriculture, one to regulate oil companies, one to hold our politicians feet to the fire, one to oversee production of medicines, etc., etc. I can do no better at this time than close with the final paragraph of the tax duty, for I am but the humble messenger, and I do not have every solution to every problem. Quote, The wise application based on observation and experience of the law of the Lima is to work in conscious harmony with evolution. Experiments in creation involving variation from existing types are lawful and necessary. Their value is to be judged by the fertility as bearing witness to their harmony with the course of nature towards perfection. End quote. Love is the law. Love under will.